guys. We are live with Lane Anderson, one of my favorite people, and the CEO, owner, founder, all the titles of London Road Marketing. Hi. Hi. So uh, just to remind everybody who's watching, or if you've tuned in for the first time, uh, that my whole thing is that business can be better and it should be. So this podcast is one more thing that we do to help business owners who are tuning in or watching us live uh, or checking out the podcast later, anywhere you can listen to podcasts, that you should have a systemized, profitable, and fun business that you like being in. And uh, that's why Lane is here today. Uh, he's, a, he's a dear friend and uh, somebody who's been very successful in a short period of time. So I'm really excited to have him teach you guys today. Uh, Lane, do you want to introduce yourself so that I don't forget important things? Sure. Um, let's see. What are the important things? The important things are, so I started a, I'm Lane Anderson. I started a marketing company six years ago next week um, called Leonard Road yeah. Media at the time, um, starting out as a content marketing company. And we've evolved to to suit and match the needs and the preferences of small business owners and became a full service marketing firm. And um, we're creating a company that has, that, that we really believe in that face-to-face -face, um, interaction between business owner or business manager and marketing firm. Uh, there are people who enjoy virtual services. We like working with people who prefer working with fellow community members and um, having that relationship is really important to us. So um, we are working on a series of sort of remote agencies across the country. We have two offices so far, but with many more planned. And then with all fulfillment happening um, centrally here in Lethbridge, where we are. Um, so a full service marketing firm for small businesses in Canada. Is that your phone, bud? Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Oh, I'm just glad it's not. I didn't mine. think you would hear it. It's because it's through the computer speakers. So why do you get to hear that? That is so awesome, though. Um, I knew you were expanding and growing, and I know you've achieved a lot in a little time. Um, because I <laughs> can you shut that off? Yeah, I'm working on it. There, it's gone. And those okay. properly. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, especially because we started this podcast together and Lane was the expert and I just listened to him and did what he said. But now he's back as an esteemed guest and he's interrupting the podcast. I know. With a ringer? Oh like my. Like I own the joint or something. Well, whoever's making your phone ring should be watching us on YouTube Live right now. So shit yeah, on them. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that's really cool. I love that. I actually over all of the bottles of wine did not realize that local in-person face-to-face client management so important yes. and such a niche that is underserved because everyone's trying to go global just like we do our coaching all over north america right mm -hmm. uh, and that's a big market and expensive market to play in with ad dollars um and i think a lot of online marketing companies are just like grabbing at whatever they can get. Yeah. Um, and I've been really disappointed with a lot of marketing companies, like a lot. Yeah. Um, maybe not in the beginning, you know, but then as I send clients over, just balls just drop, drop, drop. So watching you over the years uh, just uh, get more and more successful has been so awesome. And uh, I love I love that you shared your business model. I think it's brilliant. I love it. Congratulations. I think, it's, I think it's unique. What we're trying to solve is basically how to do small business marketing at scale um, across a country. So not just as a single local business, um, but actually to do it at scale. So far, it has not been done. I, and if someone can correct me, I actually really would love to know who is doing it. But as far as my knowledge goes and all my research, no one has cracked small business marketing, specifically, uh, exclusively small business um, at scale. Yeah, as in, as in more than even 20 employees. I don't think there is hardly anyone who's even gone beyond that. So we're trying to build quite a large um, enterprise that cracks how to do that at scale. Oh, so would that be your unique selling proposition? Not necessarily, because I don't know that that in itself gives um, our clients extra value. <laughs> it gives us value because I think we're filling a unique niche in something that hasn't been done yet. But um I guess no. I meant the the, the in-person part. 
Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And for lots of people, it's not something that's valuable valuable to them, which is how you know you have a good unique value proposition is that it alienates some people and then magnetizes others. But for sure, lots of people are not interested in that. And they're like that, like some people listening now are thinking that's not that, like that has no value to me at all. I don't care if we email and video call every time we meet. So that's awesome. Um, and probably that added value that we would provide is not going to be of benefit to those people. But there are many people and even I had a prospect meeting or someone call this week and I was booking a prospect meeting and just asked, do you want to just do this as a video call or do you want to meet in person? And right away, it's like, oh, no, no, I, yeah, we need to, I'd like to meet in person. Like, I want to, let's go for coffee. Let's sit across the table from each other. There are many, many businesses who that's really important to, and that's who we're here to serve. Yeah, that's so true. That's why we opened the Calgary office and we're doing in-person business coaching in Calgary. Yeah. People are just, uh, yeah, really craving that human connection. Mm -hmm. So I guess you've told us a little bit about yourself and your background. So So, you pick the top. Do you want to tell us anything else? I mean, we could talk forever. We could. I don't know that there's anything else relevant to what we're talking about about me. (laughs) Okay. So you came up with the topic. Do you want to share it? I did. The topic is... um, I mean, we could go so many directions. So what I narrowed in on is basically what do I know absolutely best about marketing? Because I I am a generalist. I can do pretty good work in a lot of different areas. And we've talked about email automation. We've talked about social media. We've, like we've done a lot of different stuff. But what I know that we know really well is what we've already been talking about, which is small business marketing. And that small business marketing is something that is very different than large enterprise marketing and i think that that difference is understated so the topic is that um when i is what what did i learn from marketing a very large enterprise uh, that i have now taken into how i understand how to market small business because i started in an industry by working for um a very large corporation and that was where i started and then i shifted to small business and it was definitely um some surprises in that shift so we're talking about the difference between small business marketing versus large enterprise marketing and how to do small business well. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I screwed up the title and called it Stop Copying Huge Corporate Marketing Tactics and Win. And uh, and I have seen a lot of your clients win personally, so I can attest to that. Um, why do you think this topic's important? Well, I think... I don't think you screwed up the title. I think it's important because of what you said in the title. Stop copying large corporate marketing tactics, I think, is why it's important. Because there is a lot of great marketing out there. And we as consumers, if we stop, like if we stop wearing the business owner hat and start wearing like us as individual consumers, we are exposed to marketing constantly, marketing and advertising. And usually the ones that kind of stick or that are most obvious to us are those huge especially consumer brands like the sexy brands like the ones that everyone wants to talk about like um like red bull and nike and airbnb and apple and like all these companies that are just these giant corporations and they have very slick marketing and they have amazing campaigns and that's what we think of when we think of marketing and even when people are in university studying marketing that's the kind of stuff they're looking at and um So there are some things that we can take inspiration from there, but it's not just a matter of taking those strategies and just scaling them down to suit small business and size, because that doesn't always work. There are things that they do that small business just can't do, or they can't see the gains from. And I think that's why it's important is that there's so much marketing we're exposed to. And I think a lot of people are mistakenly taking their inspiration from kind of irrelevant sources. Yeah, that really sums it up well. I totally agree. I was listening to an audiobook this weekend and they were talking about Apple. And every time they referenced them, I was just like, what if someone listening was starting a new business? Or what if someone listening had a small business? What if someone who was listening didn't have a half a million dollar marketing budget? Because we know there are so many of those businesses in Canada employing almost everyone, what, over two thirds of the population, right? Yeah. Yeah. Small business is a huge portion of the market. Yeah. So then Apple, we can take some things from them. All right. Um, But what's the major things that you learned then? Yeah. um, So there's sort of things that 
are applicable and some that are not. And to give people context, I should say what company I was doing stuff for because that helps as well. So when I first got started, I was in the poker industry um, and one of the, well, the second contract I got, but sort of the, the example we're using of the big corporation is that I had the contract for managing social media across North America for poker stars. So just before I got that contract, that company had actually sold um, to, from the original owners to a company um, in uh, Ontario or Quebec, anyways, Eastern Canada. And that company was sold for $4.9 billion. So this is definitely firmly in the large corporation, large enterprise um, territory, mm -hmm. very, very big business. And I was running social media across North America for them. And when you're dealing with audiences of a couple million people on your Facebook pages and things like that, like there's just different strategies entirely. And so my experience there was limited to how we approach social media. Um, but there's definitely things that we experience there that we can carry across to other types of marketing and small business. So some of the things that are applicable, like the things that work well there that small business isn't doing so that we should take inspiration from, are things like user generated content. So that is, and in the industry, we would shorten that to UGC. If you ever see the initials UGC, we're talking about user generated content, meaning can your users or customers or clients or whatever it is, your audience provide you with content that you can use. It comes off as very authentic. It's even better than reviews <laughs> really, because it's a photo with content. It's something they created to say, look at how great this is. Look at me using it, look at whatever. And those, that is extremely valuable to create or to create, to gather user generated content with appropriate permissions and consent for you to use in your own marketing, whether it's on landing pages in your website, it's in your own social media, it's in ads, it's whatever, but it is so powerful because it's not made by you in a studio with a script, with, you know, very targeted strategic messaging. This is just like the reason reviews are powerful. They are um, unprompted. They are very naturally worded. They come from people's own thoughts and feelings. Um, we and, can't control them. Right. Yeah. We just take what's given. And of course, we're going to curate and use the ones we like best. But sometimes that stuff is even better than what we create. We have a couple of reviews that when they came in, I said, you know, even if I gave my client the talking points, I couldn't have written a review this good, like the way they know how to phrase it, because they're the one experiencing the service is so good. So user generated content could be so valuable for small business, and I think underutilized. And it's something we did a lot of we would run contests like so if we're, we're going to use the poker stars example a lot, because that's what we're what I'm learning from, but we would run contests like win a tournament ticket, uh, um, or enter a draw to win a tournament ticket, send us a photo of your um, online poker setup at home, right? And so some people, they've got like three monitors set up and all this fancy stuff, or someone's sitting on a laptop on a beach chair, like by the ocean or whatever. Like there's all these, someone's on their phone on a bus, like there's all these different ways to play the game. And so that could be a way to do it is to run a contest, have people provide content and then using that. And especially when you get some amazing photos of people set up with all these monitors and, you know, accessory keyboards and all this fancy stuff that they can create to when they play a lot of online poker. Um, there's some neat stuff that we can create with, um, with that. So that has been, really, really impactful. And we can use that um, in our own marketing. So user generated content, that can be a way to provide or to, um, to get it from to gather it from your audience is contests. Um, I, um, we have we need more examples. This is a huge like aha moment for me. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I haven't been thinking about this. Um, you always do this to me. <laughs> I'm like, I've read all the books, I've studied all the things I have the best coach. And then I'm like, Wow, I didn't know that, or I didn't don't get think flustered. about that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, don't get flustered. So, t what are some more examples we could do in small businesses, even ones you work with, of user-generated content besides Google reviews or testimonials? Um, like, it helps when it's something that people are passionate about, right? Like, I'm not. It's hard for a plumbing company to do this. <laughs> um, but and not to say that that's impossible. I should I should start the whole thing with fine. a caveat that we're like making generalizations that you can't always just cleanly divide like small bit. Like there's going to be some things that people would say, well, that would work in my small business, and maybe it will. Like we're definitely making generalizations when we okay because I have one for a plumber if they're listening. 
There you go. What my, is it? Oh. I come home and I see my husband in our last house. It would not happen in our new house. I would not let that happen. I came home and he had all the pipes apart in one of the washrooms. And I was like, no. And uh, it actually led to a really huge insight. We did a whole bunch of uh, market research on their ideal clients. And their ideal clients were post-secondary educated people like me who would never touch a pipe. I would call someone who has their red seal to do pipe stuff, plumbers. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, I should have videoed that for the, this plumbing company that I know because I was like, what are you doing, babe? And he's like, don't worry. And I'm like, I'm worried. Like there's stuff dripping. There's just pipes everywhere. I'm like, do you even know how this goes back together? He's like, I could do it. He's like, I'm going to YouTube it. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so like that, I think would be pretty, that would be awesome for, you know, just like your worst DIY moments or whatever but yeah, yeah that's not just gonna randomly get generated that's because i was a business coach and i was thinking about what could yeah so contest you also said i think you cut out yeah. for a second there contest but i mean you'll see it often in um like say restaurants or an ice cream shop or something where they'll say share it and add this hashtag i mean that's because they i mean they're not doing that for their own pleasure patting themselves on the back and searching that hashtag and happening to see the photos like they want to be able to use them now they have a way of finding those images and you're posting it to your own instagram but then they may approach you and say that's a great photo can we use it like that's user generated content gathering because um and, and gathering it through the use of hashtags saying while you're in this restaurant post and use this hashtag i'm on the board locally for tourism lethbridge and I know our people there use that um, to say, like, use this hashtag when you're exploring Lethbridge, and then they can go in and find that content and use it to demo, like, to show people exploring Lethbridge. So, um, same thing, right? The hashtags people are used all the time. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's the, probably the most common way it's done is share it on your own social media, but let us know that you have by using this hashtag. Yeah. Got it. Okay, what else did you learn? Okay, um, also applicable and probably also still underutilized by small business is using influencers. Um, hmm. Don't need to go into it terribly because we could spend a whole podcast on using influencers, but influencers are very valuable because for two reasons. One, you are getting to leverage their um trust or their brand or whatever they have in the market so if people are like oh, i've never really heard about you i don't know who you are but they but someone that they trust posts something then you are leveraging that trust and and letting it you're borrowing it you're getting to apply it to your own business because they are speaking on your behalf um and then the other point being that you get to reach new audiences that you don't on your own so if you have your own following, you can post and your following sees things, or you can use ads and you can pay to reach new audiences. But when you use influencers, you are buying access to their audience um, and you get to reach new people. Um, at PokerStars, we did this at the highest scale you almost can in the world <laughs> as far as the influencers we're using. Like we did campaigns that use Kevin Hart. We've used Cristiano Ronaldo, which is probably the most famous athlete in the world, but less so in North America because he doesn't play soccer. <laughs> but um, Usain Bolt, um, Neymar Jr., um, Rafael Nadal, like these are all influencers that have been used by poker stars in my time during campaigns for them. So how do small businesses get people to do that for them? Like so I that, constantly get messages in my inbox that are like, wear this jewelry, do this and that. And we're like, yeah. spam, spam, spam. Um, but then sometimes I see people with really nice jewelry and that's how they got it. But anyways, um, <laughs> like how, let's say that um, our clinic wants to get like a famous athlete to come in, have the service. Like you try to send messages and it's just their team that you get, right? Like how do you get yeah. them? So these are tactics that can, they, they are relevant because they can scale down to match the size of the business. So yeah, you are not going to get Cristiano Ronaldo to be your influencer unless you have half a million dollars or whatever that costs. I don't know. Don't quote me. That's my guess. I'm not privy to the, the cost of getting these influencers. Um, but you can use micro or nano influencers, like tiny, much, much smaller influencers at a much, much smaller um cost and investment um but also can be really really targeted because then we can find people who have audiences who are either perfect 
because they're in your community or they're relevant because of what you sell, or they actually reach a pocket that you're not currently reaching very well. And that's how we used them. Um, I mean, you know, we've been doing the all the marketing for um, a local restaurant called Italian Table since they've opened, which is about, I think, four years now we've been doing their marketing. And that was something we identified um, near the tail end of our first year working with them. We knew that we had hit this certain market segment really, really well. We had hit the 35 to 50 market extremely well. Um, mm. And that was no problem. Like they were filling the restaurant, um, but he was, our, the owner, our client was really wanting to reach the college age. Like let's get early twenties up to 35 into this restaurant. Um, and so we actually use influencers to do that because we felt like we'd already done the efforts we had and had already hit this other segment. So rather than, us trying to attract them ourselves we just said who can we find who already has that audience and we'll use them and so um, one case in particular was really successful um she was not actually a student but a mid-20s person who's a blogger and social media person locally most of her following was local which is very important to us and usually is for small business um and just invited her and her husband to come for a meal that was paid for by the restaurant. And so the cost was extremely minimal because wow. it's only food cost even, right? It's not even the cost of what the meal would have cost if you were the customer. It's literally just the food cost. So some people are willing and excited to do something like that because they are small. You know, you got 10,000 followers. We're not talking about 5 million Um and so she came and they had a great meal and she did lots of Instagram stories the whole time and also did a post and then wrote a very extensive review blog about it. And then later when that was published, she also made another post and more stories. And so he's got this enormous amount. Oh, I think I know who it content is. For very, for whatever, $40 in food cost, really. And I um, think she was a student at the time or was that? Maybe she was at the time. I'm not Went sure. Back to yeah. school, I think. Yeah. So, oh, gosh, and, and I do, right? like, I never want to take advantage of people by offering them very little because the, because what they provide is very valuable. And so there are people who would say, sure, but my cost is $200. Yeah. It's worth it. Like just do it. Totally. Um, so I very much think that influencers is something that is applicable that you can scale down to suit small business that someone like PokerStars and large enterprise definitely knows how to do very, very well. Um, and small business uh, does not as much usually. Okay, I'm sweating and I didn't have a good sleep. I have to grab uh -oh. my energy drink. Okay. <laughs> cool. It's back here in the fridge. Well, what is your energy drink of choice? Oh, is I'm this so glad I didn't Red Bull? No, uh, I've been drinking these Zevia energy okay. drinks because they're sweetened with stevia. With stevia? And uh, yeah. I didn't think I had one, so I tried to drink a Rockstar, and I was like, oh, it tasted like a warm, freezy <laughs> these are like really like refreshing and light and nice still, still have caffeine okay i'm ready cool. you're interesting i'm not yawning because you're no, I, okay. i'm just I, and today i'm a little bit you know when you think you're really funny because you didn't sleep very well and then you're the only one laughing and then you <laughs> laugh at yourself for laughing that has been happening to me a lot today so you're just exhausted drunk okay yeah just just having a great day it's been very fun my goal today was just to have fun so it's happening nailed it Okay, next thing that is applicable. Um, <laughs> very, very consistent brand branding is very mm. applicable. Again, something that large enterprise knows exactly how to do. They have brand guidebooks. They have, here's, and, and that goes beyond like, here's the logo and the colors we use. Like it goes into, here's how we are positioning ourselves in the market. Here's our talking points. Here's our why, our purpose. Here's our mission. Like all that stuff is really important. Um, but also the visual, like here's the colors, here's the fonts, here's um, the logos and alternate ways of using them. Here's what kind of photos we would use. They all have a similar style. If there's any illustration, it's of this style, but also tone and voice. Like here's what we sound like in our text and here's our tone. All that is very important. So having that documented and using it very religiously is, is really, really important. Um, large enterprise is good at it because that's what they do at that size. It's just normal, I guess, but small businesses, they put less emphasis on it. And of course that again, generalization, some small businesses are fantastic at it, but some are just kind of all over the place. They have different images, different fonts, different, yeah. different fonts. <laughs> like the logo looks different here and there. Their tone of voice changes 
from one yeah. post to the next if we're talking social media like there's just isn't consistency and so then i agree it's hard to build a brand impression in the consumer or the audience because they just like i don't know who this is it's different every time i hear from them you exactly. need consistency like have you ever seen the it says like joka jola but it's the red and white coca-cola logo, oh, okay yeah but it says joka jola and you yeah. don't notice Right. You literally think it's the Coca-Cola brand. And same with Nike, same with Apple, right? Um, so that's a really good point because that's something that I have seen work really well for small business myself, small, mm -hmm. medium-sized businesses across Canada and the U.S. They think, like, they don't... So today I did a live earlier. Yeah, I can't believe I'm still awake. Um, <laughs> on uh, how to see your business through your customer's eyes. And so... I think a lot of us business owners, when we start a business, uh, for me, it's been eight years since I started my first business. And as you know, I'm a serial entrepreneur like you. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the beginning, you want to be like, well, it's my business. So I'm naming it this. I'm going to mix my kids' names together. And I'm going to have a pink wall. And our site's going to be this color and stuff. And it's like, you got to put that to bed unless you're your ideal customer. Yeah. You have to put, you have to choose things that either bring in customers or keep customers. You don't choose things just because you like them. Like, right. yeah, let's try that line of shoe. How about you research it first, you know? Yeah. Um, but the point I was trying to make is just that I don't think business owners realize, like you said earlier, they don't put themselves in like the consumer seat or wear the consumer hat and think mm -hmm. how many messages and how much advertising just like right now like i'm standing by a window and there's been so many like logoed vehicles driving by and i could see signs from here and then how many things have i seen on my social media when i checked it today even when i just posted yeah. about this you know like if you're not consistently hitting people with your impressions i'm like come on kelly word impressions yeah, they don't know it's the same company, but Coca-Cola does it so well. Like you'd think some, I think some, some small businesses just don't actually, I know this. A lot of businesses don't understand how important it is to be branded consistently. Yeah. It's yeah. It's like they're seeing 30 different people and you need 30 impressions usually to get them to take action. Right. Mm -hmm. So they better be the same. And, and I think, and like the visual, yeah. It's effective. Yeah. The visual part is for sure. And that's what people, and I don't, I just don't want people to limit th this point to that. Like it's not just about the visual because right. it's actually the consistency and branding is probably even more important in when we talk about messaging, like what are you saying about the company, right? So I came on here saying very specific things about like we work with small business across the country you know, local relationships with remote fulfillment for efficiency like that. That's what I want people to know. I don't want to come onto one podcast and say that we do um, annual planning and strategic planning and another one talking about our social media usage. And that's who we are. Like we need to be consistent in talking about ourselves. What's our UVP? What is the, who are we working with? Like that stuff has to be consistent rather than whatever's top of mind at the moment or whatever suits the audience we're talking to. Like we need consistency in messaging um, and tone so that when people hear you, they're like, yeah, that sounds like you rather than, you know, you're joking over here, but you're super serious and clinical over here. Like all of that, very, very important. Not just the visuals of the colors and fonts and logos. Right. And also beards, glasses, and hats. That's right. I got to grow it back now. Just like I know. I was like, what did you do? Life. You shaved off your brand consistency. Yep. Um, Sorry. Okay. Did I throw you off? No, I'm good. You got to stay on track for me, friend. Are we ready for another ap applicable thing? Yes, we are. Okay, last one. I have four on each side. Applicable okay. to take from very large corporate enterprise that can be utilized in small business. And again, something that small business, not always, but many small business don't see the value in or believe in is um, brand building and community building. Meaning we need to build something with a long-term picture in mind. It has longevity. We're not trying to get next week's sales. We're trying to build brand, build community, and the cool thing is small business is actually more equipped to do that than large enterprise. Like the community building you can do as a small business is 
so much easier than working for an enormous corporation where people just see it as a faceless corporation. Like you're a small business. There are very real people involved that people build a relationship. Like they know the owners, they know the people that work there. And that's, you know, you can see that team or family if people want to call it that, but it is so much easier actually to build a connection with small business than large enterprise. And I think it's way overlooked and people, in the pursuit of, I guess, those short-term measurables, like, okay, we did this effort, did my client go list go up or did my leads come in or whatever, like that, that's a tactic and it's very worthwhile and that's something that people should be doing. But there is this whole other side of it that's just build a brand that people know that they understand well, that comes to top of mind whenever they think of your product or your service, like just building that market awareness and understanding is so valuable without the sell. Just here's who we are. It's what we do. Here's some content. Here's, you know, build that relationship, build value. That long, long-term thinking is um, hard to come by in small business. They're kind of usually doing, here's the latest promotion. Here's where we are. Come visit us today. Like it's very short-term thinking. So and coming from having run social media accounts for the very large corporations like Poker Stars down to very small companies in our local community, the engagement rates you get on local business, small business is so like so many multitudes greater than you get on large enterprise. Like if you look at the stats that say, oh, the average reach rate is 4% on social media. That's because these large corporations are dragging that number down. If you're a small business and you get 4% reach, like just delete social. Like there's no way you yeah. should be getting 4% way reach. Way over 100%. Exactly. Yeah. And people so, don't get that. Yeah. So like we no. for sure would publish to a million people and reach, you know, 20,000 and get 100 engagements. Well, like I can post to my own thing and get my own page with 1,000 followers and get 50 engagements. Like – it's Can just so much people? easier as a small business. Um, we need need to do that long-term thinking brand building and not trying to force it into some sort of short-term ROI measure. It's just about, do people know who we are? Do they understand us well? Are we the first name that comes to mind when our industry comes up in conversation? Like that is what we need to earn and is maybe not given enough um, prominence or credit in small business. Sometimes people tell me to stop giving it all away, but, uh, well, my very, very successful coach does not tell me that, but other people do, but, uh, I've been writing you, you know what we do. Like we've mm -hmm. been writing a blog every day for eight years and a uh, weekly email and tips every day on Instagram and whatever, like that's our whole thing. Like our, we lead with free content because there's so many businesses out there that are failing because of the things that you're talking about today, because they don't know these things. And that's why mm -hmm. I want this podcast, for example, to be available to anyone. Yeah. Um, because sometimes they don't have, or they don't realize they have access to someone as intelligent as you or me, or, you know, or that people do free consultations or that if you read my blog every week for a month, you could probably start a pretty successful business you yeah. know a lot of us build community that way is that the way that you're talking about or what are some other yes ways? yeah so many ways right like just those deeper relationships like taking a business away from just the strictly transactional nature right like it's not just we provide this thing you give us this money like we want to build I mean, you know, our slogan about do something awesome, like we want to build something awesome. We want people to think of that brand and be like, oh, they're the greatest, right? Like the, you want an emotional connection with people. You want something long term. And that doesn't happen with click funnels and like conversion optimization. And like you need to build things that people connect to. And that can mean so. So this is what like I think I got an advantage in being able to get a start in the poker industry because we couldn't be transactional in nature. It is not legal to advertise poker on the internet for money. That is like a really can, cool experience. Right? Like it's, you basically have to, and, and I made a video about this once to basically market your product as if it's illegal <laughs> because while online poker is not illegal, just so everyone is not concerned, <laughs> it's not illegal, but You're according to, <laughs> it is not legal to advertise 
for money gambling, period. So all the ads you see on TV and everywhere else where they do it, they're all pointing you to the .NET site, which means that that's play money and it's just for fun tokens and it's whatever, it's nothing. So then obviously they know you just hit in .com instead or hit a different tab and then it's for real money. But it is not legal to be transactional and especially on social media because while Canada has our own advertising guidelines, Facebook has their own and it's even strict, stricter, more strict. Um, and, and so there's just oh, things wow. we couldn't do. We can't link back to the website and say sign up here. We can't give the deposit bonuses. We can't like there's nothing you can do other than actually build relationships and community. So it was just about content. It was, here's a, like some of it is like test your knowledge type stuff, um, which I mean, I'd give examples, but you'd have to know poker to get it. Oh, (laughs) Test your knowledge type things where it would fill in comments. She's a different company. Don't make me feel dumb. (laughs) Not telling everyone that I don't know poker. poker. Sorry, I can't be good at everything. Okay, guys. I read a lot. You um, did give up. You stopped inviting me I a long time ago. Them. Yeah, oh. we need to do another one. But yeah, we do like the knowledge testing stuff. There'd be videos from live events of poker happening. There's, you know, whatever. There's just lots and lots of content we create that don't have any ask. It's just entertaining or it's informative or it's engaging in some way. And so that sort of like where I cut my teeth and honed my skills in, in marketing was in that environment. And I think it served us really well because it taught us how to not fixate on the transaction and the immediate conversion because it's just about building brand. And I think that's what has led to our success is that a lot of our clients get treated that same way where we push pretty hard. Or I mean, we definitely do the transactional and all the conversion based stuff because we're full service. But when it's not that, we are good at being gatekeepers and saying, no, that is not what this is supposed to do. Like, divide them, keep it separate. And social media, if we're talking about that specifically, is usually, like, almost always should be for the end building type stuff and the relationship building. It's not for the transaction. We can use ads for that. Um, So it's just good about setting boundaries and saying, like, no, let's, like, pretend this is illegal for a sec. Let's just create content that makes people prefer us and love us I'm so, sorry. <laughs> so earlier Mindy, <laughs> earlier one of my employees texted me that they were just gonna coke up and then come into my office but they meant okay. come up come up well a bit There's of a, a spell okay. and so every time you say market something illegal i'm like oh damn we have a leadership meeting at five <laughs> o'clock and i'm just like i can't wait to tell this story this yeah. is great stuff lane is that your third point of eight that's four on the applicable. So I got four not okay. applicables now. Okay. Excited okay. for these. Okay. Not applicable. Um, the Wait, type of... Right, guys. If, if you're just joining us. Sorry, Elaine. I totally... Yeah, go ahead. Do, also, yeah. P.S. I heard your phone vibrate a few minutes ago. Um, if you're just joining us, we're with Lane from London Road Marketing, and he is teaching us all about the, the things he learned by working for a huge corporation doing marketing for a huge corporation and then now really niching down and doing local small business with locations across the country. Um, and so he's given us already four things. Maybe you could sum those four things up actually, if you don't mind that do not do apply, do do apply the first four things that do apply, you know, from big gigantic corporation, uh marketing to every time i say big gigantic corporation it makes me angry because when people say they hate corporations i'm like we're all incorporated (laughs) you know like say publicly traded corporations or something but okay so what were the four applicable things really quick four that are applicable i mean they may need to be scaled down to an appropriate size but they're applicable are ugc user generated content yeah um using influencers and again scale it down micro influencers nano influencers whatever Um, being very consistent with the usage of your brand, how you come across all communication needs to be very consistent brand wise. And the fourth being um, that community building brand building stuff, Um, you know, not transactional, not conversion based, spending more time and effort on building a brand that people love and trusting that that comes back around in good ways. And pretend you're 
product is illegal. That's yeah, market want. your product like Sorry, it's guys. illegal. My husband bought me this like awesome. It looks really awesome because he won't, my back always hurts at home. So he just wants me to stop whining about it. So he bought me this standing desk, but it's like a standing desk with a standing desk thing on top of it. And it's not oh. attached. And every time I type a tiny little note, because it's so good and I want to remember it for later, everything shakes. But uh -oh. at least I didn't have my ringer on. So, <laughs> so oh, you lame, burn. Okay. Okay. Not applicable. Mm -hmm. Not applicable. First one is the type of events that large corporations can do. And Poker Stars does a lot of this. They will run huge poker festivals. They do huge poker parties. Um, it is, and it's just like absurd. Like these Don't are just events that you just cannot do. And so that does not mean events can't be done for sure. Events are useful, but the impact they get from events. I mean, I went to an, a, um, a poker, a tournament series of theirs in Macau. I was very lucky to go there and that was all paid and got to go to Macau and work this event. Um, and then they do like a player's party usually. And they did a player's party. They just rented the entire nightclub on a Saturday night of the biggest club in Macau and had like a famous DJ playing it and dancers and acrobats and completely open bar, just like bottles of alcohol everywhere and you drink what you want you just come and party and leave wow. and no idea what that party cost them but it's just so absurd it's like a spectacle of an event that it has an impact because you're like oh wow can you believe that they did this so if it was just like come over to our place we're gonna have some drinks you'd be like cool like you can't what i mean is you can't scale that down and still have the same impact right like it, it has to be that scale to work and or that much of a spectacle Yes. Yeah, exactly. It has to be that ridiculous almost um, to have that much impact. And that usually comes at a cost. <laughs> it's not free to make that big. I mean, I once flew to Toronto for one night just to go to a PokerStars party and flew back the next day because oh, I was invited I over? and they rented this, the big, I forget what it's called, but it's the big sports bar in downtown Toronto. And there was 500 people there and it was all free food all free drinks at acrobats and games and what the jugglers and magicians they always bring in like circus type people it's like acrobats and magicians and all this stuff and it's just like on the floor entertainment everywhere you look it's just crazy like it's a spectacle well and, i'm gonna get um, some acrobats and we'll see yeah you can't scale that down to i'm bringing them to more. your house for beers <laughs> You can't take, so if your business is one thousandth of the size of theirs, you can't take that party and scale it down to one thousandth of the scale and get the impact, right? Like it just doesn't work. It doesn't scale down. Um, because we only have 14 more minutes. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with you. Please Let's go on. Let's move on. <laughs> as okay, much the next as I one love then, arguing with you. The next one then is uh, similar to influencers, but this side of it I don't think works as well, which is ambassadors. And the difference between influencers and ambassadors is ambassadors, it's more of a long-term engagement and agreement that they kind of represent you. It's not just a single post or a series of posts. This is someone who who represents your brand and that is really valuable to you because um, they have some sort of following in the market. PokerStars uses it a lot. They use some of the best poker players in the world. They sponsor them. They Everyone knows they're a PokerStars pro. And so if you like them, if you follow them, if they have success, then you're like, oh, they're sponsored by PokerStars. So that's their ambassador. And they go outside of poker as well. They have like um, Jen Shahade, who I've gotten to know well. She's like one of the best chess players in America. And she's also an ambassador for poker stars. Um, these are all things that work well because again of scale and all of these people, especially they, they like to make ambassadors out of Twitch streamers because they have audiences and they're creating content every single day streaming um, poker on Twitch. And that is something that works really well. Again, economies of scale, things that work at that scale and don't necessarily at for a small business. So I've seen it oh, attempted. Really cost that much. Yeah. And, and there is, there's ways to scale down the cost. Like I've seen small business actually use this one a bit where um, let's say, so something I've gotten into this year is disc golf, Frisbee golf. And there are companies, small business who will sponsor a disc golfer and be like, Oh, he uses our disc or she uses our disc. And it's just like, you can scale it down in cost because you give them some free discs or something. You're probably not actually paying them cash, but the impact of it is also just so minimal. Like is, are people actually seeing that and then wanting to buy no, them? 
you guys almost hit my dogs with those things when we ride by. <laughs> Can you? I never see the logo on it, though. <laughs> no, probably not working. Um, also, side note, don't let me forget. I have to tell you about another company that I'm buying, and we are going to make a spectacle event, and we're going to prove that last one wrong. Oh, okay. there's someone running up to my window. Okay, it's okay. Okay, okay third one. Um, not that... only here anymore. I, pl- I apologize. <laughs> The third one that is that doesn't really scale down and doesn't need to be done, not applicable to small business, is that large corporation usually highly values professional production on everything they produce. Like it has to be so slick, so polished. Everything we put out went through a whole media production team and everything is just dialed. Like beautiful design, amazing video production. Everything is the best you can get. Um it just doesn't need to be for small business. And we have to get over the idea that it does. And in fact, when it does, it usually it's actually negatively impacts you. Um, totally. What we try and shoot for is what do, what is the current kind of average that most users are producing on their own? Because when we talk social media, people are creating their own content and we can see like, what does people's, the normal users, everyday users, not companies, what is what are they producing and what does it look like? We want to be there and maybe a notch above. You don't want to be worse where everyone has like good phone photos now and you've still got this like grainy Blackberry picture. You don't want that. What? There are no Blackberries. <laughs> Someone's got one. No, they don't. <laughs> So you don't, you just want to like match the level of what users are doing. Cause if, yeah, if it looks like a feature film and it's coming up your Instagram is just like, ah, corporation, just, just keep going. Right. You, you want spend like a hundred grand on the ad. And that's all your money for the year. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see this in like... small business with ads where they're used. And this is where user generated content actually works really well. It's just yeah. someone recording it on their phone in the passenger seat of a car while it's driving and they use that as an ad because it just looks so authentic. Um, professional production does not apply. You can yeah. leave that to large corporation. Yeah, I agree. Um, the last one that is, yeah, that I think goes against what people are moving towards. The last one that's not applicable is like really deep analytics and data. People like are so, um, not like, not big data, just very in-depth data. <laughs> People like are what? so in love with data and insights. And it's just it's just not like you just spend so much time and money getting it for small business that it no longer becomes a great use of your money. So say you had a $10,000 campaign, you could spend $10,000 and get some pretty good metrics of whether or not that worked, or you could spend 10 th- or you could spend $5,000 on the advertising and spend $5,000 getting dead on accurate data. So do you want to cut your spend in half so that you can afford to measure it perfectly? And I just, for small business, that's a consideration. When you're talking about running a Super Bowl ad, like you want to make sure that you're spending what you need to, to get the metrics you need. And that's totally fair, but we definitely have customers who are wanting to only spend, you know, maybe a few hundred bucks a month on Google search ads or something. Well, we may not put in all of the different call tracking metrics and all the things you'd have to put in place to be able to track every single conversion and every single thing of value that happens because that just costs more money. And that could have been money you spent on more ad spend (laughs) and you can trust that it's working or you have anecdotal evidence that it's working or whatever. So people are just getting very this just in love with enamored with this idea of everything's trackable. I need a data. I need everything measured. And there is a point where it just isn't providing more value than if you just use that money to do more marketing. (laughs) So yeah, I'm going to say that our monthly marketing report would probably be if anyone tracked more than we did, it would be excessive. And we do include that. Like maybe that's something else like if people are thinking, well, what's the right amount to track, you know, um, if you can calculate what, like for me, it's return on investment, conversion, cost per lead and cost per acquisition for each of the different levels. So let's say we have three different mm-hmm. levels of product or service and we know the average lifetime value of the customer. If the cost of getting another customer is small in comparison to their lifetime value, then that's okay with me. Yeah. Um, 
but like we also use UTM tracking links for every different campaign on every different platform, which I don't think is too much, right? Knowing where the clicks came from. But I could totally see how every time anyone on my team posted, we could create a UTM link for every single thing like this we could do. Every post, every, you know what I mean? And then we would just have this gigantic report on Google Analytics that would be like, but how we make sure that it's not, how we don't make the mistake you just said that small businesses could make, I think is because we include our employees time and labor burden and benefits and WCB and all that um, government money that we give to the government and um, the ad spend, anything associated with it. Yeah. We calculate that in our ROI to make sure that even yeah. with the time we're paying for, that we're getting like 1,500, 1,800% return. But yeah, if somebody's yeah. spending a ton of time doing something and we never get, or we get, we don't get a return, yeah, we stop or we tweak first, then we stop if it doesn't work. Yeah. And yeah. And there's like at the level at Poker Stars that we were doing, there's just, there's just stuff that would be so in depth for small business. Like we, we would track the sentiment of every um, engagement, every comment that would oh, come in on all. So, and, and then also so invested, so invested heavily in artificial intelligence to detect that for us, but we would still review it manually quickly and make sure that it's correct. And so it would be like positive or neutral negative segment sentiment on every single comment. And then coming up with averages like, Hey, this big announcement came out and all of a sudden our sentiment like declined a bit as an average across these thousands of engagements. And so maybe that had something to do with, this was not received well by the community. Like you just get into such layers of depth of analytics that it's just not, it hundred percent is valuable at that scale. It's valuable. Okay. When you're a small <laughs> business, when you're a small business, it's like, yes, okay, that right. might be overkill. I've read all the messages myself. Yeah. I have a good gut feel of where <laughs> we're going. Right. Like okay, you're, yes. good. you're right. Keep um, going. I'm not going to argue the, on that. Because the rest of the analytics are available. They're there. Like Facebook's got them, Instagram's got them, Google Analytics, you've got them. Like you just don't need to go yeah. deeper than the tools that are sitting in front of you. So. Yes. Okay. I agree. That's it. That's all of them. Four not applicable, four applicable. Perfect. I have five minutes to get ready for my management meeting. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach them. The you should have known we needed two hours, Kelly Ray. I know. I know. It's my mistake. Well, you weren't drinking, so I figured we, or are you secretly drinking? No, I just, just water for now. We'll get okay. into that in a minute. I was like can figure out how to shut off your ringer. I was a little worried about you. <laughs> I put my companies in your capable hands before and this guy doesn't know how to silence his phone. So thank you so much for being here. I miss you. We should catch up soon. Yeah. Um, so proud of you. Uh, I've been around just a couple of years longer than you and you've yeah. achieved so much in the short time that uh, we've been friends for six years. It feels like forever, but yeah, uh, really proud of you. And uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your, your time so much. And we always learn so much from you. And anybody who's listening, can you let them know? Did you come up with a quick tip? I did. A really okay. easy Wait. one. Take what no time. Okay, this is like a super just pragmatic one because it changed my life. Okay. You know when you like copy, like control C, control V. So you copy something from one document and you need to put it into a different document, like your email or something. But then it carries over the formatting and it's all screwy and doesn't match. Yes. So when you paste it, put control shift V instead, and it'll match the formatting of the document oh. you're putting it into. Oh my gosh, I've wasted so much time. Mind blowing. It just matches automatically. How have you known this? You're supposed to be my friend. I'm sorry. It's been a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. Take that, guys. <laughs> control shift V, not. Yeah. Control V. That yeah. does that work on a Mac and a PC? Yeah, yeah. It was. And I think it was told to me from a Mac user. So, well, yeah, and it'll. Yeah, Mac. it will remove the formatting and make the formatting match the document you're pasting into. So. <sighs> shift. No, no, no. Control Shift V. Just add a shift to your Control V. I'll text you later for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your notes. So it's in your show notes. Okay. Well, I'm keeping these. Don't take these down. Okay. Um, Thanks for listening, guys. I know we had a lot of fun today, but I also learned a lot, and I hope that you guys did. You can uh, follow Lane in a few places. 
where he's going yeah to my talk. two probably the best ones would be linkedin so just look me up lane anderson and then my instagram is at the real lane anderson awesome oh yeah i forgot to laugh at that one I guess it wore off. I used to laugh every time you said that. Um, desensitization. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd probably easiest to find me on LinkedIn as well, Kelly Ray Tamaki, and uh, at Kelly Ray Business Coach on Instagram. Uh, are you on TikTok? Uh, yes. I know. Not I'm actively. Kind of, I'm a, I have I, one I video. Made one video. <laughs> that was one video of me when I removed my beard. Oh, so it's so funny. It's That's so funny. Forever. Okay, we'll have to catch up soon. You yeah. guys, um, please make sure that you ca capture those points. Um, user uh, con user generated content, uh, using mini influencers or micro influencers. I can't speak anymore. Consistent branding, always, guys, no matter what size you are. And community and brand building. And just like Lane said, pretend what you're selling is illegal. So just think free content, think engagement, think actually caring about others and having relationships. Um, I really love that one. And uh, I have no quick tip. I think Lane's is just so good. I'm, I'm trying to remember it. For both of us. Yeah, it's big enough for both of us. Okay, guys. Well, um, thank you so much for listening or watching. And uh, I know that'll help if you apply it. So take Lane's advice and uh, remember business can be better and it should be. Talk to you soon, bud. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Bye.